Hi, Joe here over at Willie Cottage on a really windy, blustery day. Um, I thought I would do my breed study today. Um, this month is about the Kent Romney or the Romney Marsh. Um, so I have got some shearling Romney that I've got for a lovely lady called Dorothy. Um, I had this ordered a few months back and she just got round to getting the wool sheared. Now, she used to do this as a hobby farm, but she won't be doing this breed any longer um, due to circumstances. Um, so next year I am waiting to get a kid, I think it's kid mohair that I'm getting from her next year. That's I'm on her waiting list for that. So that'll, I'll bring that up in one of my breed studies because at the end of the day, breed studies doesn't always have to be about sheep. It could be... Um, I could might be able to get a hold of um, baby camel. This is nothing to say that we can't talk about that. Um, goats, Angora goats, alpacas. You've got the Hayuka, alpacas, and the Surrey alpacas. And I actually do have some Surrey alpaca um, fleece available. I've actually just washed some downstairs, so I'll save some of that for another breed study and maybe do that round about Christmas time because that's when I'll be due to do my next breed study anyway. So yeah, the um, the Romney um, is, gen is usually known as the Romney Marsh, but the local farmers like to call it the Romney Kent or the Kent Romney. It depends on whatever your brain remembers it as. So this, now it's not as long as it should be. Um, when the, she'd been waiting on a hand shearer to do her sheep because they're a hobby sheep. And he didn't cut, the shearing pro uh, did do the shearing properly he he did she said when she was trying to sort out the fleeces because she actually picked them and separated the fleeces for me um i've just washed these myself and they should be about um 10 microns or more in length um just a minute 10 to 20 10 to 20 centimeters in staple length now you can see they're not at all i mean it is a shearling fleece um, so it's, it's really, really soft. It's not the coarser types. So he double cut it. So instead of going through near the um, the actual hang, the flank of the, the sheep and cutting it, he did one row and then did another row. So I've lost about an inch and a half off the length of these. So, but I mean, if if you want to buy some, I will have them, and I've, they're already washed. And you can literally, they've got gorgeous little locks. These look, see the crimp on that, it, it's, it's so sweet. So I'll be selling them in 100 gram sets at bundles. I'm not gonna card them because you can spin these straight from the locks. And then look how easy that's just pull, pulled out and you could literally just spin that straight from there. So it's a good sample, if you've never tried it before. Um, and it's a lot softer than the, the Romney that I buy already pre uh, in rovings from the mills because as I say, it is the shield and it's not been mixed up with um, adults' fleeces. But they're about an inch and a half, two inches long. They're not as long as they should be. I'm trying to see if I can find any longer pieces. Um, hold a sec. She pulls it everywhere. Um, yeah, but this, I mean, the micron count, you get coarse and fine, depending obviously on the age of the sheep and where they're brought, um, brought up and bred. But generally the micron count on a, um, we're going to go with the Romney Marsh, because I like the sound of that more than I do the Kent Romney sound. Um, sticks my head a bit better. Um, the micron count on this is roughly about 29, um, up to 37. Now, if you can get your hands on a shearling, I always try, whenever I buy my fleeces, I always desperately try and get a really young, the two-year-old sheep, especially if I'm wanting a long locks and which is what these should be um it should be definitely a longer lock at least two maybe going on three three um three times the length of that um so yeah i'm quite happy with it i'm going to be using i've got i think i've got about three kilos of this this will but i'm keeping a kilo for myself i'm definitely going to process it and spin it all up and do make a project with it as well but i'll be putting these on the website and i'll be selling them a little 100 gram set so if you want more just let me know when i will get them washed up and sent out to you so yeah so we're looking at usually on an average length they'll look at about four inches and more or 10 to 20 centimeters long micron count roughly about 29 um, up to about 37 um coarse defined wheels and they come in a variety of different colors so they come in grays brown um, let me see what I've got here. Grey, brown, uh, silver and white. Um, 
so yeah there we go so that's what it looks like I mean it is it is really you can see how crimpy that is now you can felt with Romney um, very easily but the finer the wool is on the, like whether you've got a shearling or not it just it's a little bit more harder work so you may find if you felt in with this you want to try and find yourself an older shearling um, shearling an older fleece um, but yeah definitely potential there to felt with that without any issues you can felt with it but you may if you, as I say if it's a younger sheep or a one that's been born this year and they've um, sheared it later in the season then you may want to have to work a little bit harder at doing that so you they are originally from the southeast of England so the Kent area and they were always known as the Romney Marsh and they were bred as long wool sheep from the Middle Ages, uh, Middle Ages, since the medieval period um, and I did find that around about 1800s they were um, recognised as a English breed which as we all know if you're looking for records on breeds in the UK it all started around about the, the beginning of the Victorian period when they were recognised um, as specific breed types. Um, they were bred with um, Bakewell's uh, Border Leicester to make them more stronger and versatile sheep for the, especially for their meat production not just for their wool and they were always used for wool the fleeces were always used for wool importations and things like that now the information I found quite a bit so obviously you know that there can be a long a long fleece um, the wool's ideal for hand spinning as I say um, and you can wear them mainly as outerwears like shawls hats mittens um jumpers but they're really good for making for weaving rugs and things so if you ever got a fleece and you weren't perfectly like you've got a peg loom or something like that and you want to do a bit of weaving with them you could definitely do uh, peg loom rugs with them they're a really good hardy wool to be able to create that especially if you've got an older fleece they don't have a lot don't store a lot of lanolin and i do know that i mean this was quite a relatively clean um wool when i got it when i pulled it out of the bag as i say it had been hand picked by the breeder for me uh, before she sent them she always does this um so but when i was washing it it definitely wasn't dirty i probably did it in two rinses and that's all i had to do so that was a my usual hand hot water with nothing in it beforehand and then i emptied that to get majority of the water out uh, sorry the dirt out the sink and then i just did one wash with the my detergent and they were, it really didn't need much more than that and just rinsed it off and, and that was it done it was clean and i'm really pleased with how it came out and it didn't felt neither there was no felty patches which i was quite unhappy about um so what else so there's only a fraction shown of this um romney fleece in the united states because they don't have um they don't really use this wool for domestic uh, properties like making rugs or anything like that they just they find that the Americans prefer this for the niche market so like it's great for beginning hand spinners because it, it's got that lovely crimp in it um, so when you're trying to do your hand spinning for the first time you've never done it before it really holds its own for you and take a little bit of bashing about because as I say felting wise it takes a lot to get it felted so the number, oh a minute, so I'm going to go back into a little bit of history of it. So as I say, it's formerly known as the Romney Marsh, or the local farmers always called it the Kent Mar uh, the Romney Kent. Um, and it is a long wool, uh, long wool sheep and it was recognised as an English breed by the 1800s and it's always been exported to other countries. So the origins are right, derived from the medieval period and it was crossed with the Romney to the Leicester breeds. Um, early examples are shown. If you can find any old um, Victorian breed books, sheep breed books that were used for the auctions and for farmers to find out what type of sheep they wanted to invest the money in, you'll find them in there, the original kinds. Um, the breed, they bred it with the Leicester to improve its body type, so they get more meat from it. And they are a really big sheep. Um, bigger than the most breeds in comparison to like a, a Cheviot from what I've discovered. So you will find that they are really good mothers and they're, they really are a really lovely sheep to have, very soft mannered, um, great mothers. Um, so back in 1856, 20 
of the um, Romney March sheep were in, exported out to New Zealand from a town called Stone in Kent over to a town called Cornwall in New Zealand. And then a couple of years later, they um, sent out another 30 ewes um, to the same place. And by this point, um, New Zealand already had something like 60,000 60, merino sheep roaming around the countryside and they were already established in the country for their breeding. Um, but because of where the Kent Marsh, um, Romney Marsh sheep were bred on the salt marshes, hence its name, they fared well for really bad, rubbishy, wet weather, but then humid in the seasons when the summer came in. So they're really quite adapted to that type of environment. And that's why they did so well in New Zealand and the New Zealand farmers and breeders actually crossed them over with things with sheep like the Shetlands and the Jacobs and the Cheviots and I think they may have bred them with Border Leicesters as well from the information I've managed to gather. So it quickly became, um, it really really thrived in New Zealand and quickly became one of the largest um, bred sheep in the country. Um, so by 1965 three quarters of New Zealand's sheep population was the Romney breed. And by the mid 1990s, 58% of the New Zealand sheep breed was Romney sheep. And by 2000, there was 45 million Romney bred, either purebred or crossbred sheep in New Zealand. And still to this day, that is their main export of um, wool and meat that is sent out all over the world and actually equates to just over half of New Zealand's financial income is from this specific sheep. So now that they're actually bred, they are sent over to um, is it Patagonia, um, Australia have the sheep now, Portugal, Brazil, Canada and Southern California all breed the Romney Marsh sheep. Um, and it was England was the primary source of this breed of sheep from 1900 to 1955 and we sent them over just in that period of time 18,000 rams and 9,000 ewes left England to 43 countries during that 55 year period. Um, health requirements as well they're really good versatile sheep they're, they're not prone to foot, uh, foot rot or liver problems and now they're actually generally regarded as the main seed stock from New Zealand that's imported to the UK if we're looking for new breeds or a fresh breed that's where we research that's where we go for the seed stock or for embryos or whatever is New Zealand which is really weird considering that they were a Brit they are a British sheep it's them that specialize in the in these breeds now um, and they got the, the seed stock are generally sent off now to the Falkland Islands, Uruguay, the UK and USA. Um, so, yeah, they're quite a versatile sheep. They're really well recognised throughout the world. Um, and the sheer number of Romney used in New Zealand and the bred not only the biggest input um, overseas to domestic wool trade, which they actually send their wool um, because of the, a slightly coarser wool, which is something that you would use for furniture covers and things like that and weaving, uh, the wool is actually imported from New Zealand once the meat goes into processing and sent over to China. So if you ever get anything that's from China, apodastria or upholstery fibres or whatever, you'll probably find it's actually from the New Zealand bred Romney stock. Um, and New Zealand's world's largest exporter from chilled lamb and frozen since 2008, and they are the Romney meat that we probably eat in the supermarket. So yeah, that's about it really. There's not a lot to go on. Um, bits and pieces that maybe you wouldn't have thought of looking for. I did come across a blog online and I'll put the link in, think, um, in the descriptions below. And it's a blog site called Weaving with Romney Tweed. So I, I find it quite a really interesting read and it's about how they, they sourced a local breeder and they get their fleeces and they put it through the milling system and then they weave with it and create tweed. So definitely worthwhile. It's um, romneytweed.co.uk. As I say, I'll leave the link below. Um, yeah, so that's about it really. There's not a lot to go on. Um, weight wise, you're looking at roughly three and a half to 3.5 kilos 
of fleece off it, off the ewes and rams um, and because yeah that <laughs> that's it so I'm sorry it's been a little bit short there really isn't a lot to go on and so I'll be listing this wool on my website in 100 gram sets um, for about five pounds if you want one let me know it's all been hand washed in eco-friendly um, detergent um, if you want me to card it into bats let me know but it does take a little bit longer um, I just thought it was easy to have it like this because it'd just be an absolute delight just being straight from those little locks I thought it'd be really really nice or you can get your, your card your cards out and just flick open the ends and just get going and spinning from there and that's what I plan to do I might do a video of me spinning these actual wheels and have a little down chat or even do that on one of my live chats on a Saturday um, but yeah so thanks very much for watching sorry I've not had any videos up this week there's a bit of things going on back home <laughs> Obby's going away and I've got lots to get sorted out and house to get tied up and jobs and things like that I haven't done the videos and the autumn's kicking in now so my fibro is kicking in a little bit so you may only find me uploading one video a week as well as my chat videos because this time of year really does affect me quite a bit with the seasons changing um, quite rapidly and consistently all the time so one minute is sunny and the next minute is cold and we've got some really cold weather coming in so if you only see one video a week coming onto the onto the youtube channel don't worry there's nothing wrong i just haven't got the time or i'm just not working as much as what i'd like to do and then i'll go be back into full pelt again come next march when the sun comes out again so thank you very much for watching. Any comments or suggestions of breeds that you might be wanting to have a look at and see if I can get a hold of. I do have quite a few about the house anyway that I'm, I will be talking about. And I might do my next video um, at the end of this month for November since I won't be uploading too many anyway over the next few weeks. Do you take care of yourselves. Live chat on Saturday and I'll see you then. Thanks for watching. <laughs>